Hey guys, Bill Gates is buying up 2,100 more acres of land in North Dakota. Even though he already owns 270,000 acres of farmland, he is the largest landowner in the United States. Farm landowner, that is. So I've got a story off the Zero Hedge, and it sounds a lot like sharecropping that happened here and it happened in England back in the 1800s. We're going to go over that towards the end of the video. But before we get started, I want to tell you about the Ninja Nation Report. If you have anything you would like to report that's happening around you in your area that you know for sure is happening or, you know, make it truthful, you know, all we have is our word in the Thunderdome, email anything you see or know about to ninjanationreport at gmail.com. And we'll get the message out right here. Thank you ahead of time. You guys are great. Now, Bill Gates, he already owns 270,000 acres of land. He has been granted legal authority to buy another 2,100 acres. It's going to cost him $13.5 million. That's a drop in the bucket for old billionaire Bill. He is circumventing a 1932 anti-corporate farm ownership law by pledging to lease the land back to farmers after the purchase is complete. All the 1932 anti-corporate farm law was is to bar large corporations from owning and operating farms. But he's saying, no, 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 we're not going to do that. We're going to lease it to the farmers. You know, we're the good guys here. North Dakota's, Ag Dakota's agricultural commissioner, Republican Doug Gorig, previously said that many people feel like they're being exploited by the ultra-rich, and you should, who buy land but do not necessarily share the state's values. I know I don't share the same values as Bill. I imagine everybody in this community doesn't either. I've gotten a big earful on this from clear across the state. It's not even from the neighborhood. Those people that are upset, there's people and others that are just livid about this. So the people that live across the state that aren't even where this is going on are pissed off about it. They don't want a billionaire owning all the land and telling them what to do with it. And I completely agree. Bill Gates acquired six parcels of land in Pembina County. Tuesday, the Office of the Attorney General sent out a letter asking the Red River Trust to confirm how the company plans to use the land and if it meets any of the expectations to the North Dakota corporate farming laws. So is Bill going to be able to say, here's, I'm going to lease you this land, but you have to grow my GMO seeds that I have grown and mutated and modified in a lab right next to his other lab. <laughs> so I don't trust it. I don't like it. I think this should be a free market. Farming should be a free market. They tried to do this in China with a great leap forward. They, they tried sharecropping before, and it just seems, it just seems par for the course but awful. Bill Gates and other billionaires have been buying up huge amounts of land, farmland, while Americans are being told by the neo-feudalist, the Great Reset goons, the uh, technocrats, you know, the people that create the technology and crush the middle class and make the poor poor. Uh, I think about it like the Terminator, the movie. Remember all the robots and uh, AI stuff, and then you had the, the wealthy and that was it? That's what it reminds me of. The future is one without private property. You know, you will own nothing and be happy. <laughs> I already done that and I wasn't happy. Gates is also intent on pushing 100% synthetic meat products. Uh, keep in mind, he's not a vegan. You think he's going to eat that? No, absolutely not. And he's buying up records amounts of farmland and monopolizing the global food production. That's the zero hedge. Now, I went ahead and looked into sharecropping and what happened with it. I'll read you a few highlights from that. Sharecropping is a type of farming where the farmer splits the profits from the farm with the landowner. The farmer provides most or all of the labor and equipment, while the landowner provides the land only. Sharecropping was common in the South after, re after the Reconstruction as a way for black farmers to get back on their feet. Uh, I don't think it worked out for them. Today, sharecropping is used to develop countries as a way to give farmers access to the land without they wouldn't otherwise have. 
it sounds so wholesome and good. Critics say that sharecropping keeps farmers in poverty because they never own any of the land. Uh, chart of land prices. Check that out. Wouldn't you want to own your own land? Now, in the early 1800s, England experienced a population boom which led to the a shortage of farmland. To solve this problem, Parliament passed an Enclosures Act which allowed landowners to take control of a common land and divide it into smaller parcels for farming. This led to many people becoming homeless and forced them to find other ways to make money. I can't imagine the people that were hungry. Some people turned to sharecropping, which is when farmers split the produce from their land with the landowners. You know, I hate renting. I always want to, always want to own. It doesn't matter if it's equipment or anything. I, you know, sharecropping was very unpopular among farmers because they felt like they were being taken advantage of. In 1875, Parliament passed a Midland Counties Act which made sharecropping illegal. So let me know what you think in the comments. I just don't want a billionaire that I don't trust owning all of the farmland around us. It seems like, a, like it's not for us, if you know what I mean. So don't forget about Ninja Nation Report at gmail.com. Send anything you see. And guys, have an awesome, awesome day, and happy 4th of July. Later.